is what it will be on the TV. Okay. That's the way it's going to look like. Is that going to be okay? That's fine. Put it down so we can see it. Yes. Okay. Now, can you take a shot of this first? Okay, now it's going. It's already going. It's going right now? Mm hmm. All right. Here we go. Mr. Hansen, would you care to tell us your story? Well, I'll tell you. I was uh, running a re help my folks run a resort, and then my youngest brother. He enlisted in the army, and I thought I waited about a month. I thought, well, if he's in the army, I'm got to I've got to go down and enlist too because we'd be drafted anyway. So uh, I went to St. Paul. Didn't know what I was going to do, but I I uh, seen it says join the Marines and see the world. <laughs> so I walked in and uh, recruited an officer and. And uh, about two days later, I guess, uh, yeah, it was two days later, I had, I had to have my birth certificate and all that. So I went back home again and got all that. And then I went back and then there was 68 of us went down to South Carolina. About a, and uh, going down to... So, uh, on the train, we, we rode all night, we rode all that day, and the next night, all these guys got drunk when we got to Fort, Fort Royal, there was five men missing. <laughs> 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 they, they throwed cushions out of the coach, passenger coaches, and <laughs> pretty soon a hard-boiled sergeant had to meet us about a, half a day before we got to Port Royal made us come to order. I, I had the papers up with me, but I wasn't going to try to tell these guys what to do. <laughs> Just a green farmer kid. <laughs> and then we we loaded onto a boat and we went over to the Paris Island. And the next day we put us out, checking us over, and, and they says we want, we want them all you truck drivers fall in out here. So we, everybody thought they were good good truck drivers. I didn't say anything. I was just a farmer. They was all loading the big barge full of wood and they gave them wheelbarrows. That was the Fords they were driving. <laughs> and I, then I took my train in there for about six months. We, we had, we had uh, they couldn't get clothes for us. We was uh, dr uh, drilling with pajamas for about probably a whole month. Then we finally got our uniforms, and, and after the six months was over, we were uh, sent to Quantico. And I think it was, I can't remember exactly if it was a month or two months so long ago, but then they picked us all six footers for crack battalion. And I was one of them, I thought, boy, that's going to be great. <laughs> and they drilled the hell out of us. <laughs> 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 and then after, then we got ready to go to, uh, sh to ship us over to France. Took us down to uh, New York, and we loaded on the old Von Steuben boat. I have a picture of that boat, boat too. It's on the cover. And there was 22 days going over there. They had a zigzag, you know. There were seven boats in the convoy. And we landed in Brest. And uh, of course, the last few days I had the mumps. <laughs> <laughs> Both sides. <laughs> and then they would put us into camp, quarantined us for a few, d few days, you know. 21 days, I guess it was. Then they, sh they kind of split us up, and we had to find our way back to some other town. I can't remember that name, that town. And when I got those little French coaches, you know, you you sit facing one another. There's yes, the couchette. Yeah, I guess that's what you call it. <laughs> mm -hmm. <coughs> well, we rode all, all night, and then I got off there. I didn't know where to go. I found a barn, I went and slept in that. 
And then the next morning I went down there and I see them lining up for chow, so I lined up with the rest of them. <laughs> and I just can't remember now. We, oh yes, they, they formed platoons and then we, I got to see some of my old buddies here and they, and they was drilling us there for quite a while at St. Agnes. And I imagine that was about a till up to about the 1st of June or something like that. And then the convoy of French trucks took us back to uh, a little place that they call Lucy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's up near the Bella Woods, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, then they took, uh, they took us and filled us in for replacements, and it is in the dark, and we lost track of one another going through the woods, you know, real dark, couldn't have no lights of any kind. Mm -hmm. So I got up back of a big rock, that's where I landed first, and the fifth and the sixth was really heavy fighting. As we crossed a little oats field, it was beautiful, the oats was all standing. But uh, on the 5th and the 6th, and then on the 7th, I went back to fill my canteen with water. And uh, that oats field was like a plowed field. The shelters so heavy, you know. <clears throat> the timbers were all shot up. And there was Germans laying a, lot, a little ravine on the edge of the woods. That was the first dead I seen. Then I seen it had to walk over a lot of our own boys. Of course, I didn't know any of them. I just stopped to look at them, who they were. And on the seventh, the seventh, we, there was a sniper pecking away at us. So Sergeant Earhart, he says, Hans, and I don't remember the other buddy's name, come on with me. Went up there, and there's a little guy up in a uh, tree with a machine gun. He'd been pecking away at us, you know, and he wounded a few of them. And they, when we got up close to him, we scattered out. And the, uh, this young guy, he only looked we about 16. He put, he hollered, comrade, but the sergeant shot him anyway. Because he came down the tree. And then <clears throat> he, he got two watches off of him. And he carried them because if they would explode. They didn't know what they were, you know. And then on the 8th, we went over the top. And then things kind of quietened down. And about around, seemed to me, around 4 o'clock, or get, just getting dusk. And uh, we had advanced. And as we were advancing, that's when I got hit to the leg. I went down, my leg was shot, uh, the bone was shot broke. And I guess I laid there for a couple of hours, it seemed like a week. And they picked me up and took us back to an old, a long culvert. Oh, I imagine it was about 60 feet long or something like that. Just full of soldiers laying in there wounded, you know. Then about 12 o'clock they picked us up on an ambulance and uh, a double-decker. The guy above me, and then I laid underneath. When we got to Paris, in a, in a, a farmer's market shed, they start cutting my clothes off. I was all full of blood. This fellow that laid above me, he was bleeding, but he was dead when we got there in Paris. And uh, then we, they held us into the hospital base, Red Cross base number two. And uh, I was operated on that morning, the next morning. And I had a good growth of beard. I hadn't been shaved for probably over a week or something like that. <laughs> and uh, when I woke up, I always felt like I was in heaven, I guess. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, and then this here mess kit that I had carried on my side here. 
that, that's when I was hit. I, I don't remember when it hit the mesquite, but I got it. I felt the one to the leg. It, did, it didn't hurt. It just my foot went from under me. They, they shattered the bone, you know. And, and then the second day after we was operated on, they took us back to Satan's air on a train. Wrote us on, mm -hmm. just, we rolled a, a whole day and they put us in the hospital there. And I spent about five, six, seven months in that, that hospital <laughs> with a wound. That's, yeah. a, that's a navy for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Had a big frame built around me and a sack of sand hold, to hold my leg out there and I had to lay on my back all that time. But they fed us good. Then we got so we could, uh, after a month or so, I guess I walked with crutches. And we'd go over to some French place and drink wine and cognac. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, were you a draft dodger? What's that? Were you a draft dodger? No, sir. <laughs> yes, I was. <laughs> I was in a way. They had a $50 reward out for a final where, where I was. How about that? Tell us about that. Well, the captain, they called me over to the captain's office. He says, you'll have to go back. He says, I said, no, sir, I ain't going to go back. I was in service already. He says, if I go back, I will desert. <laughs> They so, accused you of being a draft dodger and you were in France? I was in France. <laughs> Can you imagine that? And uh, then when I, when I came home, I, they told me about that they had, it was a reward out for me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my, I'll go to go over and see the draft board. My brother and I hit us. My brother had the, his sweetheart over there. I said, well, well, I'll go along with you and we'll see, see the draft board at the same time. Oh, well, he was in the Navy. He had a brother in the Army also. Yes. Uh -huh. Well, anyway, he went, went to crank up the old Model T Ford, his britches split. So, so we didn't get to go. <laughs> you know, the Navy guys, they wear a little tight pants. Tight pants with those yes. buttons? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, all three, of, all three of us boys went over over the 90 mark, and uh, I had a sister who went 96 when she passed away. Longevity. I'll be 96 in April, this coming April. So we've been living a pretty good, long life. What uh, what month was Bella Wood? What month did you fight in Bella Wood in World War One? Uh, June, June first. Or uh, yeah, we was hauled up to the front June first, but on the fifth and the sixth, I was up on the front line, and on the seventh, it's kind of quiet. Like I say, that guy was pecking away with a rifle looked, uh, or machine gun with us, and that's when the sergeant went up there and shot him out of the tree. And then on the 8th is when I got wounded. And your canteen was hit? Now how did you get your canteen? I mean your uh, your mess kit? This mess kit, I got my name carved here. Arthur Hansen. On this side is Hansen. And I scratched six Marines in here. It's kind of hard to... You can kind of see it right there. Uh -huh. And, and then the uh, doctor went over there with the legionnaires. He went over with the legionnaires? Yes. And went over Bella Wood? Over the Bella Wood to visit there. And they, this, all this stuff was supposed to lay on the battlefields. They weren't supposed to take anything off from there, you know. Mm -hmm. But he, he smuggled this one back. That's two years after the war. And he had in his attic for about 10 years. And then he's. Happened to notice it was uh, my name on here. Six he looked it up through Red Cross, and uh, he thought he'd uh, try to trace up the owner of that. So I got a 
ten years later. <laughs> You're one of the few that managed to get something back. Well, what about what about this business with the muddy overcoat? You oh have... <laughs> yes, we was up in the Verdun, and the, we was in the trenches, and the the rats would eat chew through our pack sack, eat our raisins, you know, <laughs> and. And the coats were so heavy from mud, so we cut them off. One, one off and bought the knee. Otherwise, they come down to your ankles. Long coats. Yes. And they took a month's pay away from us, which was $21. <laughs> Find us for cutting our coats off. Then they took us back there and back to St. Agnes, I think it was the place where they took us back to. And from Verdun? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then we drilled every day till we got ready to, till the 1st of June, we was taken up to the Bella Woods, up to Lucy, the town of Lucy. What, what did the French think of the Marines, the Marine regiments, the 5th and 6th Marine regiments, the Americans? Well, they, they were, they thought they were good soldiers, but the Germans called us devil dogs. Yes, sir. Yeah. <coughs> But the French were, were, were retreating, so, and the, we lost a lot of men. I think our own broads killed a lot of our men too. We were advancing so fast. Got caught in your own barrage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, what about uh, why didn't you uh, stay in the Marine Corps? I yeah. would have. If it had been for my leg, I'd have stayed it. I liked it. <laughs> you liked the Marine Corps? Yes, I did. Uh -huh. And I you just. just Used to heavy work, hauling gravel, lumber, coal. Mm. <laughs> well, now you have a story to tell of World War One experiences. Why don't you build up? Tell us a little bit about between the wars and the coming of World War Two, and what you experienced or what you felt in World War Two. Because here you were, a hero of the World War One. It was supposed to be the last war. And now we go through the same thing again. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your feelings on that? Well, I don't know just how to say it. <laughs> Any way you wish. Uh, I was well satisfied with the service. I liked the We got along fine, all the buddies. Never had no trouble. Sergeant, we liked him. When we, when we were on Paris Island, we we built roads with oyster shells. It, we'd have to go probably half a mile to get up two buckets <laughs> and carry them down. And then uh, one time we thought, well, had to dig them out of the sand, you know. Mm -hmm. We found that the fresh oyster shells was drifting in, so we put them in the bucket, and then we put the little dry ones on on top. <laughs> <laughs> We fill our bucket faster and all that way. <laughs> Pretty soon the sergeant could smell the oysters, you know, they were raw oysters yet. Yeah. Oh, what a stink. <laughs> what did you do after the war? After you, after World War One? What did you do? Did you after come World, back and... After World War One, I uh, took over the summer resort. The folks turned it over to me. We had 22 boats and a hotel and about five cottages. And this is where? The where was it located? Otter Tail Lake, Otter, Otter Tail County. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the little village was named Otter Tail too. That's the county seat, Otter Tail. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and then you you watch the depression come and the economy go down. How did that affect you? Well, then then the folks have traded the. The resort off for a big farm up on the Indian Reservation. And I went up there to, to run the farm. Dad gave me 40 acres. And my other brothers got each an 80. And uh, it's all Indian up there, you know. And uh, all timber. I, was, I had seven cows I'd bought. And uh, nothing open. Just all timber. I was cutting cordwood and fence post. I was selling the fence post at seven cents a piece. Maple cordwood at eight, uh, seven dollars a cord. 
I had a span of, span of mules, 1,600 apiece they weighed. Mm. <clears throat> Talking about mules, it was a, uh, the Marines only had mules. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can remember that I can still see that mule with the guts hanging way down to the ground and still standing. That yeah. was on the 7th of June when I went to fill my canteen with water. He got shot. The, the mule got shot and the guts were hanging out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's all I can remember. Well then, on the, I was, uh, just, uh, we were loaded on the boat at Brest on Armister's Day. Oh. We were loaded on the boat first. Uh -huh. Then about 12 o'clock, I guess we got, or, or earlier than that. We got notice that armistice was signed, and we would grab the sh each other and wipe the paint off. <laughs> <laughs> we felt so happy, you know. They fed us good, mm -hmm. and then we pulled out about that night, about around 12 o'clock. We were so loaded with the uh, ammunition, you know, that's uh, cannons. They had to, supposed to dismount them before they could pull out, mm -hmm. but they pulled out anyway. And, and it was 11 days coming back on the Pastorius boat. You came back twice as fast as you went over. Yes, uh -huh. we did. But going over, we sank a submarine just before we got into Brest. I was in the, in the sick bay though. I didn't know anything about it until <laughs> they told me about it, a little about it. One of your destroyer escorts managed to get themselves a sub. Yes. Mm -hmm. I was on a lookout going over until I got the mumps. Uh-huh. And every day we'd have a box and a match, get a platoon up there and <laughs> see who could knock the other guy out. <laughs> yes, it didn't change much for Korea. It was about the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, what, when did you first notice um, a threat for World War II? When did you start feeling uneasy then? Here you've gone through World War I. Yeah, I feel sorry. I know what those boys had to go through, mm -hmm. and I still have nightmares. I can't help but think about it. Where were you on Pearl Harbor Day? What's that? Where were you on Pearl Harbor Day? I was here in Minneapolis. Uh huh. Yeah, uh, I felt sorry for that. I, a lot of my friends lost boys there from Minneapolis. And you lost your home in Minneapolis due to the depression. I did. A lot of people yeah, suffered that. There it is. Yeah, a lot of people suffered that way. Lost my 40-acre farm up on the Indian reservation, and the the firm I worked for is in the jeweler manufacturing. He went broke, lost my job. Oh, you you learned how to be a jeweler? Yes. And did you have any kind of GI Bill or anything? Did the government pay for anything or help you in any way? Uh, the government pay. Uh, we was getting fifty dollars. I was getting fifty dollars a month at that time for uh, pension. And you're only getting twenty-one when you're in the Marine Corps. And twenty-one in the Marine Corps. <laughs> That's a heck of a raise. <laughs> Quite a difference. <coughs> and you, uh, you, you're. Your boss lost his jewelry business. Yeah, he went broke. This is in the 30s. This is in the 30s. And you were living in Minneapolis then? Right? Yes. And then I went out and I got a job on a high highway grubbing trees mm -hmm. for three and a half dollars a day. <laughs> you kind of like Paul with onion. You really one cut thing, down a lot of trees. The only thing that kept us are going. My my wife was working in the Munson Ware. She put in 38 years there, and we was buying day-old bread when we just skimping. I had a cow, and I bought an acre of land out in the, out in the suburban. Mm -hmm. Lived in the basement for one year, I guess, and then we built up. I had a other guy; he was a carpenter, so we we had the. This here red resin paper, we, mm -hmm. we sheeted up after we got the siding on and everything, mm -hmm. and had a little airtight heater, and had two rooms. We just lived in that until the spring came, then we finished building. We had to save money, you know, 
build as we go went along. Just basically kind of like a little shack. Yes. Uh, you, did, you, did you have welfare or food stamps? Or no. There was no such a thing as uh, welfare or food stamps at that time. You had to get by on your but own? But later on, in the 30s, then I lived out of, uh, I went in the cities and I rented a place mm -hmm. while I was going to school, or the factory where I learned my trade. And uh, I can't just remember now what, what the month that was. Oh yes, I, I saved up enough money so I could make a down payment on two acres of land. And, and uh, as we we making our ten dollars a month payments, I guess was that. And I got that paid for, and then I built a house. Well, it were, I had to blow some stumps out first. My neighbor lived there just across the road from me, and I killed all his geese eggs. <laughs> <laughs> I blown the stumps. <laughs> I never knew that till he told me. He says, the missus pretty mad at you. <laughs> well, what, what kind of job did you work at during World War II? What kind of job did you work at? Uh, I was in the general manufacturing in, business. During the whole yes. World War II? Yeah. How old were you in 1941, may I ask? You were about, what, 40? Uh, must have been in the 40s. 45, 46, somewhere there? Something like that. And they wouldn't take you in World War II? You're too old. I was too old. Well, yeah. I crippled up anyway. Right. They wouldn't take anyone over 40. My, my leg still bothers me here. That's where I was shot. They went around through. And they used to, you know, they got prod flush in that. And uh, they used to take your gauze and pull through there. And boy, oh. did that hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Does that still bother you? Oh yes, my foot is flexible as it should be, mm -hmm. and I gotta watch when I step so I don't trip over things. I get a pension on that, thirty percent. Nice little money coming in. Well, it's it's you deserve it. You deserve every bit of it. What about uh, what? Uh, were your impressions? How did you feel when you heard that the Japanese had bombed at Pearl Harbor? Oh, I felt bad. I thought, the thing, how, how, the, how they sneaked in there. It, it did bother me. A lot of good Navy men went down. Yes, I'll say so. Just like this man down here, he lost his. He's got a picture of his son. Yes, I, I, I know Michael. I knew him. Uh -huh. You know him. Mm -hmm. He's a nice old fella, too. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, I wouldn't want to go through it again. No, sir. It, do you remember anything specifically about World War II? Now, here's your uh, the six Marines are all through the South Pacific, and they're on Guadalcanal. And well, I, I hated to read about it. There's uh, a lot in the paper about it, you know, and it just I'd lay there at night and dream about it. it. It bothered me. It still bothers me from World War One. Yes, sir. <clears throat> How about the end of the war? What did you feel when you heard the Germans had surrendered once again, had lost the war? Oh, uh, the Hitler. Yeah, Hitler. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I knew they wasn't going to last. <laughs> no, the Marines ain't supposed to retreat. No, sir. <laughs> no retreat for those They're guys. not taking prisoners either, but I guess some of them did. Some was taken prisoners. Who was it? Uh, I can't remember who it was. His, his boy was taken prisoner. It can't come to me now. In World War I or? In World War II. World War II. Yeah. Uh -huh. Wasn't it Marion's boy? Huh? Wasn't it Marion Bill's boy? Oh, uh, Bill Hill. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah, Bill Hill. He's the one to give me this buckle. <laughs> Him and Mary was on a vacation and he found this buckle and he said, that's for art. He says, I sure appreciate it. So when I find golf balls, I give him the golf balls. <laughs> <laughs> Where was his boy taken prisoner? What's that? Where was his boy taken prisoner? 
So in Germany, I guess, or with that World War II, uh -huh. I don't know just where. I never give me the full details of it yet. Mm -hmm. But Bill's uh, a heck of a nice guy. If his brother was like he is, why? Well, too bad a man like that had to be bumped off.